Hello, and welcome back to Minecraft Through the Spyglass, the Let's Play survival series that rediscovers the history of Minecraft while following the timeline in our own world. We will collect various unobtainables along the way and discover how different the game is to what we are used to today. Hi, my name is Monster, and I will be your guide through the Alpha journey. From Secret Friday updates to the addition of the Nether, this is all things Alpha. Alpha is the next version of Minecraft after InfDev. If you haven't seen my previous video explaining everything pre-Alpha, you should definitely start there. You can see the very basic block game that Mojang started with. Alpha is where we really start developing the world building aspect of Minecraft. This section of Minecraft's timeline focuses a lot on the player side of the game. Things like multiplayer, environment ambiance, and overall quality of life are really improved. These versions start on June 30th, 2010, about a year into to the development of the game. There are a total of 42 different updates here. These are where we also see Notch's Secret Friday updates. These actually start during InfDev, but most of them happen in Alpha. These secret updates were unintendedly named due to the fact that Notch would rarely announce them and they seem to come every Friday, with one being on a Saturday. The first one was released on June 18th, 2010, and added minecarts and rails into the game. The second fr Secret Friday update was released on June 25th of the same year, and introduced dungeons, spawners, and saddles into the game. These were both during inf dev and not alpha. We now reach the first alpha update, which is also the third Secret Friday update. On July 3rd, 2010, Marcus posted on his Tumblr, where we find a lot of the announcements of Secret Friday updates. Minecraft Alpha has been updated to version 1.0.1, .1, with some bug fixes and a metric ton of secret features, including six new crafting recipes. You need to explore new areas for some of the new stuff, but not for everything. Dig deep. This update added iron doors, levers, redstone dust, redstone ore, redstone torches, stone buttons, and wooden and stone pressure plates. It also introduced some changes like the inventory model of stairs, the texture of oak doors, the generation of mushrooms, the size of signs and they can now be placed on the side of blocks, and the drop mechanics of furnaces and spawners. Next up, we have V1.0.3, V1.0.2 contained mostly bug fixes, so I'll be skipping that and other versions that don't contain much because they aren't really important. This version added hostile mob sounds. Before now, all the mobs in the game made the same oof sound that the player makes. Caves also gained ambient sounds, which we are all familiar with when we are playing late at night and zoning out. The pathfinding of mobs on hills is improved along with their idling behavior. They now stand still more and look around at their surroundings. V1.0.4 is the fourth Secret Friday update. Here we got a new winter mode, snowfall, and two new blocks, ice and snow. This is the earliest alpha version in the Minecraft launcher. Ice that is slippery generates when exposed to the sky, and we also get snow that spawns when blocks are exposed to snowfall. The snow at this point cannot be obtained. We also see a new loading screen with animation and stone instead of cobblestone. V1.0.5 mainly added snowballs and snow blocks. The snow block drops 6 snowballs when mined and takes 9 snowballs to craft. During this time, the snowballs are able to stack to 64 instead of the 16 stack that we have today. This is the first unobtainable that we can discuss and is a great example of what they are. If we find the snowballs and stack them to 64, then leave them in a chest and update to a new version, we've just collected something that in later versions is impossible. This idea is what inspired me to do this series to begin with. Moving on to version 1.0.6 is Secret Friday 5. Here we get cactus and boats. The cactus only does damage when punching them or making steps on them, and the boats that we can craft will break if they are placed on land or if there is impact with land. The boat can also fit in a single block of water. V1.0.8 gives us cows. Leather is dropped when a cow is killed, and they add in a bucket of milk, but it isn't obtainable yet meaning you can't milk cows. This version also changes the recipe for leather armor from using wool to leather. V1.0.9 is kind of a bummer update. It removes the flailing animation of the arms around the player and humans. I found this animation to be fun and it brings a playfulness to the game. V1.0.10 is the initial support for multiplayer but only uses one private Mojang server that players have to be given invites to get into. 
V1.0.11 is the sixth Secret Friday update, and it's a pretty big one. We now get reeds that can be found near beaches, clay, paper, books, clay balls, bricks, and slime balls, which of course means we get the slime mobs. Bookshelves now have a crafting recipe, but still drop nothing when broken. The brick texture no longer hurts the eye to look at, and the cactus now hurts us when we touch or collide with, and it can only be placed on sand. We can also get our milk bucket by right-clicking the cows. V1.0.12 is another kind of bummer because now slimes make sound. Yay. V1.0.14 is our seventh Secret Friday update that adds jukeboxes, eggs that can't be thrown, two music discs, cat and 13, minecart with furnaces, minecart with chests, and of course, chicken. It's crazy to think that it isn't until 1.0.14 that the minecart was introduced. It's such an iconic part of Minecraft to me. V1.0.15 now makes lava set blocks on fire. Yippee. Around this time from August 30th to September 2nd, Marcus would take part in a programming exercise at the Valve company. He met with Gabe Newell, who offered him a dream job at Valve, but he declined. Marcus declined because he felt that Minecraft was his opportunity to create his own Valve instead of working there. Soon after, Marcus would hold his own meet and greet and call it Minecraft Con 2010, which is technically the first Minecon. Over 50 people would show up and talk to Marcus about Minecraft. This is also near the time that the famous Hero Brian creepypasta was born. If you don't know, Hero Brian is a legend of a player messing with old Minecraft worlds. A user posted his story on 4chan explaining this white-eyed character moving throughout his solo world, leaving weird monoliths, moving chests around, and other odd things. Conspirists theorized that it must have been Marcus's brother who passed and is a ghost in the coding. But Marcus shut down any rumors about Herobrine. He would tell fans that he never even had a brother. Though Marcus has confirmed that Herobrine isn't anywhere in the coding, it hasn't stopped Herobrine's story living on in the Minecraft community. After leaving these fans and meeting with the Valve company, Marcus was feeling inspired. He Skyped one of his old friends, Jacob, and told him, let's do this, inspiring Jacob to also quit his own job to commit full-time to Minecraft's development. The next three versions are mostly bug fixes, so we skipped to V1018, which is the eighth secret update. We now have fences and spider jockeys, which is the first jockey to be added to the game. Milk buckets can now be emptied, and right-clicking now matches the player's arm. And the chicken AI has changed. Now instead of falling, they slowly glide to the ground. V1.1 is the final Secret Friday update that brings us compasses. These compasses don't point north as one might think, but instead point towards the spawn point of the world. V1.1.1 is Secret Saturday update, which is very similar to Secret Friday updates with one difference. This one took place on a Saturday. It adds fishing rods, which can stack, but have no use. It adds in the new paintings titled Graham, Greebet, Donkey Kong, Skeleton, and Pixine. But most importantly, this version adds in sneaking. We can now grip our toes against the side of blocks to prevent us from falling to our doom. V1.1.2 During this update, famous YouTuber PewDiePie would upload his first video, and it would be Minecraft. On October 2nd, 2010, he would title the video Minecraft Multiplayer Fun. The video is about two minutes long and shows PewDiePie and friends laughing at a zombie in a minecart. It's crazy to think that near the beginning of Minecraft's journey, PewDiePie would also start his own. V1.2.0 is a pretty big update for the game. This update is also known as a Halloween update, coming on October 30th, 2010. We officially gained the Nether in game, along with the Nether exclusive mobs like Ghasts, Pigmen, and Zombie Pigmen. We also see Nether Rack, Soul Sand, Glowstone, Carved Pumpkins, jack-o'-lanterns, and of course, nether portal blocks. The new items include a clock, glowstone dust, cooked, and raw fish. And the final update in the alpha category I want to mention is V1.2.3. This is because it now shows player coordinates on the debug screen, which is really important. Before this, traveling around was more dangerous as you could get lost with no way back. Players would build stone pillars with torches to show which direction they were traveling in hopes that they could locate these on the way back. It also allows players to now mark locations of important things more easily as you could just write down the coordinates. There is one more section of releases, but these are all server related and are primarily focused on fixing server bugs. 
The last one is on December 3rd, 2010, which brings the Alpha timeline to 6 months. At this time, on December 1st, 2010, Jin Bergenstein, or Jeb, joined the Mojang team. Originally, he was focused on the back-end work of another Mojang game called Scrolls, but he would become increasingly involved in Minecraft's updates with Wolves and Piston. Another member would soon join the team as an art director. Marcus Toivonen, or Junk Boy, joined Mojang as a creative and would become known for creating the Minecraft logo. Mark is a secretive person and chose to remain faceless as videos and pictures would be blurred and the Mojang team would all agree that he didn't have a face. With the addition of Junk Boy, this brought the Mojang team to six dedicated members, with C418 being hired as an independent contractor. And with that, we can officially wrap up all the information you need to know about Alpha. That's all versions of the game, that's all updates, that's all the behind the scenes stuff that I could gather about Alpha. We have one more version before the official release of the game, which is beta. But for now, we're just going to focus on building up our Let's Play world and seeing how that updates through the versions, seeing what breaks and what doesn't break. I'm excited to actually do some content uh, on the world and not just pumping out information. These versions, the pre-alpha and alpha, are very information heavy, but um, after this we'll just be doing Let's Play videos. Thank you so much for sitting through all this information if you sat through till this point in the video, and I hope to catch you guys in the next one. Bye!